Good morning guys. Today is an exciting day. We are beginning the installation of the Battleborn battery system. Um, as you can hear. <laughs> uh, we're cutting and hanging all the equipment and then we're going to start wiring. But Pete and I are outside digging a hole right now for the ground for the whole system including the, uh, the solar panels when we get them and everything. So this plate will be buried about 20 inches in the ground and then a uh, the ground wire hooked up to it. So thankfully the uh, the snow has protected the ground from getting too frozen so there's a bit of frozen ground but the rest is still soft underneath. So we're going to start hocking away. Around here the challenge is roots. There's roots everywhere so let's get digging. Okay, so he's got a panel installed now. Uh, we're still working on digging that hole for the ground. And the two inverters are installed. They come with a really handy clip. You just screw it to the wall and then clip them on. And so they're hanging just below the batteries. And he's positioning everything to be the most efficient for wiring. So yeah, we're making good progress. Never be seen again. <laughs> All right, so Dan and I are just heading to the marina to grab. Uh, either our last or I don't know if they have one or two more hundred pound propanes for us. And of all things, we're heading through this area right here, actually we call the Narrows. And there's ice, we're about to drive over a little bit. It's not thick sheets yet. Let's see if I can grab a piece. There's ice in the lake and it's quite a bit in the little coves. Right in the center there's not much. Up ahead I can see a bunch more. Um, this type of stuff I'm not really worried about with the boat. You know, it just goes away and breaks And This is a double aluminum hull, one of the old legend boats. So it, it can go through ice, no problem. But uh, we're just gonna take her easy, go real slow. And this is beautiful. I've, I've actually never seen when the ice is coming in on the lake. I've never seen that transition. So from here on out, it may, it may just start freezing. Like it's all in this cove over here, it's beautiful. And the lake recently, what's probably helping it freeze is, I mean, it's like minus four, I think, right now. Uh, not the coldest day, but um, minus four Celsius. It's uh, not the coldest day ever, but it's been cold consistently now for a week, and the lake is glassy calm. So that might be helping. There's no wind today, so maybe it just had a little quick freeze or something else. So it's neat to see, though. Imagine the noise on one of those big icebreakers in the Arctic, you know. They're going through stuff that's way off the way through. I just swapped with Peter to drive for a bit, give it a try and see if it's fun in there. Because it's fun as it looks to drive a boat through ice. been in that cove it was a good spot for fishing for so long but now that the water is so high I guess I just picked it up and scooted it out. Seems like each year a lot of your old fishing spots disappear and you find new ones.
it looks like the whole cove back behind me there is uh, frozen as well. Pretty crazy. I can't believe it can happen so fast. Just last night we were out here getting some boats out of the water and it was all fine. I guess it's the stillness of the lake and the consistent cold temperatures that can freeze it. Now that we've come out into kind of a more open spot of the lake, there's no more ice. It seems to be more in the still areas and in all the coves there. And then as it melted off, it probably came running out of those coves and floated into the center narrows. But uh, it's starting to snow. And apparently tonight's supposed to be pretty cold, so we'll see what that ice does by tomorrow morning. Look at the snow behind you, it's actually boxing in. Yeah. Hopefully we can get this done fast enough that the track we made through that ice is already done and we can just rip through it. Alright, well we got two propane tanks. Dan's got them up front. But now it's snowing, just a light little snow. And this is a pretty heavy load for this boat, so we're going to be taking it real slow on the way back. It's actually nice because we can enjoy the sounds of the ice. It's, it's a unique sound for sure when you're in a boat. Last time we heard it was in Iceland actually. We were in a fjord with a bunch of icebergs floating around. But we were in Zodiac then and we weren't carrying propane. So, make a slow journey back to the cabin. We're going to be coming back through ice soon. Even in that short amount of time, the uh, path we made through last time is already all closed back together. So last week we had incredibly cold weather which gave us a taste of winter. We thought it was here to stay but uh, we, got, we got a little reprieve from the cold and the warm air blew in and uh, the snow was melting like crazy and we're just enjoying a bit more fall so definitely not complaining. We got the hot tub going again in the background and tomorrow's American Thanksgiving and uh, I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of our friends and family in the USA and uh, we because Carol's American I'm Canadian our kids uh, are dual we celebrate two Thanksgivings one in October and then one in November and then we have Christmas to look forward to so lots of celebrations here at the cabin um, but I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, we are gonna enjoy our time here at the cabin making lots of food and just sharing with each other what we're thankful for it's a really special day. It's one of our, other than Christmas, it's one of our most um, celebrated days. Just because being thankful is such an important thing and you can't be in a bad mood, you can't have a bad day when you're thankful. None of that can, those two can't go together. So to take a full day and just share how, how, how much we are thankful for each other and for all of our blessings is a special day. All right, we're gonna take a really cool duck thermometer and test the uh, temperature of the water. It's November 25th, so let's see what we're at here. So 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 5 degrees Celsius. So um, I don't know, it probably won't freeze till it's at zero, but uh, we'll test it every day and see how, how fast it drops or how slow. Um, we've already had a bit of ice on the lake as you've seen the river that comes out of this lake froze 
And then when we had this warm up uh, yesterday, it kind of broke up the ice and came out into the lake. So when the boys were out there, they got a, a pre kind of taste of what the ice is going to be like very, very soon. Temperatures are supposed to drop again uh, rapidly over the next week. So yeah, I, uh, I think just my guess would be that over the next couple of weeks, maybe mid December, things will be starting to freeze up pretty, pretty good here. And then talking to some of the locals, usually by New Year's, everybody's on the ice with their snowmobiles. So we'll, uh, we'll just keep testing the water and we'll let you know how it works out. So just do it the same way I just did it. All right. So basically all you do is take the end and then all you're going to do is you're just going to, you're going to measure that basically half an inch and then just try to turn this like this. Okay. And then you just want to score it. You're going to score it a little bit more. And then if you score too much, you don't want to cut the cables off. You right. just want to kind of just, and then you'll bend it back and forth and that breaks the jacket the rest of the way. You should be able to twist it and pull it off. Okay. 
too, too hard. Just take a look and see if that email came through or, or you haven't sent it yet. Oh, there it is. Oh, uh, yeah. I did shoot it over. Yep. From Derek? Yes, sir. I got it. That's awesome. Super helpful. And uh, just going to yank it up here real quick. Oh, wow. That's awesome. We're going to go ahead and wire that and then we'll shoot you some pictures and you can comment on them and make sure we don't blow the place up. <laughs> Plus, I love pretty pictures, you know. I'm a, I'm a wiring nerd. So awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for your help. Uh, that, that was super helpful, and uh, we'll get back to you shortly. That sounds great. You guys have a great day. You too. Thanks, Derek. I've heard so much about how their uh, tech support is so quick and helpful, and here we are on a Saturday, and it's also the Black Friday big sale, so um, they're busy as can be, but I made a phone call. They picked right up and shot us a diagram for what we needed. Excellent. That's pretty good. Let's go do it. We actually don't have cell service here and we're definitely off the regular phone grid, but we're able to make digital calls over our uh, Starlink uh, satellite system. So I was able to talk to the tech support at Battleborn and they emailed over while I was on the phone, they emailed a diagram of how to run these, you know, six batteries. Uh, we were looking at a diagram that showed us how to do four, but just had a few questions about adding the other two. So I just printed it off. I'm going to put it in there and uh, we're going to give it a try. generator and hook that into your AC in on both of those that's the next thing I got to do that'll be the automatic kind of kick in thing yeah so and that's um, gonna be charging that'll charge now hey guys so this is Dwayne and he's from PSL a local contractor and he's been helping us with the install of our Battleborn batteries and all the Victron stuff and uh, we're pretty excited because you can hear in the background there's no generator running and yet the lights are all on and the whole house is running so Good job, my man. It's awesome to have it running. Now there's a few more things, obviously, to do on Monday. You're coming back. And and some then, of the cleanups here and there, just to get everything strapped and, and supported properly, and then tying in all the devices so they can all read each other. And, right. And, and then later in the well. winter, when, when it ices over, you're going to come back, and by then we'll have our solar panels. So right now we're just charging the batteries off the generator every once in a while, but um, we can't wait to get solar panels on and then we're truly ready to unplug and be up off the grid. But yeah, why don't you explain uh, some of the basics of this, I mean, pretty cool looking setup over here, starting probably with the battery bank, right? Yeah, so this is the kind of the heart of your of your system. This is where all your, your power is going to be. So from there, um, it basically goes through each other down into your controller. 
which is your distributor and that basically takes everything and sends power to all your your devices that you have um, your inverters basically come in takes the power converts it from DC to AC which is then comes over goes into our AC panel which here and then some plugs that are right over here that basically are for now going to be distributing the power from this uh, um, generator room or power to power room and then also to the cottage which we're going to be doing on Monday to finish that up so that they have power over there all the time um, that's basically what happens with that when the batteries get to a little low um, we turn the generator on right now and then that will again go to the uh, inverter and then it changes and starts charging the batteries so that they get brought up to be able to run without having the, the generator on so that's the, the Coles notes of yeah of how this system's working so those things uh, these panels obviously go on there but they are um, they're a charger and inverter a charger and inverter so which they is do kind both. Of so, so you're running a 30 amp 30 amp service. line from from your generator uh, goes into into a splitter box right so it can serve both of them to give it basically to create 220 that's okay. what we're doing so that we have true 220 into the house okay and then the way you wired these um so all the positives all the negatives together but there's a, a there's a, a a pattern yeah which we call 24 volt right exactly for 24 volts so that's what our output is that's what our system is okay. and with the help of battle born they were able to to, Give to us make the sure design. exactly so that we had it uh, the ability to to hook it up properly for 24 volts nice and then the whole thing is grounded down into the ground yeah, so basically what i've done is i've each component is just bonded through and into the panel and then from the panel it goes through uh, a ground wire down and then we like we dug the hole yeah. that's two feet deep and uh, with a ground plate so that basically keeps everything at the same potential and everything stays safe in case something was to happen say sure. lightning, uh, lightning strike, strike something. something came apart and there's a short or something for whatever reason right. you know, tornado happens or whatever hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that's basically the, the system that's what we've got hooked up so far oh, amazing in terms of running power in the house in the cabin um, right now we're running all our lights and a bunch of probably you know editing computers tv screens things like that but what could you potentially run with a system like this you could probably run a, a whole house yeah like with all the lighting and especially now with led lights right. your loads are so much less than than anything else and we're going to be uh, in the summer running up uh, next year in the winter as well running a submersible pump for the water for the house so that has a big hit of short term though. The short term just for a second exactly. just to get the pump going and then it eases back exactly so this system's designed to handle that no exactly problem. you'll take that in rush nice for sure good well um so on monday finishing up it's basically just uh the heater cables so that these yep. self-heating so wires go in which you're going to have a switch to turn them on and off okay um the so automatic shut off automatic shut off will get tied in um the charge controller or the, the shunt controller that's going to get tied into the the servo okay so that can and then basically we can have everything being read in the inner system nice and then the last thing is uh, of course solar panels which is um, they're on order and we're excited to uh, get that all done well Dwayne uh, thanks it's been a pleasure so far I look forward to Monday thank you very much you're always welcome to stay for dinner where Dan's been making stew but I know you got to get home and uh, we want to get you across the lake before it gets dark yep so thank you very much let's head out <laughs> <laughs>